Welcome to Channel 17, the Town of Colony Government Channel. Hello and welcome to The Money Factor. I'm Richard Naylor, your host. Today we're going to look at the Town of Colony's purchasing department from the point of view of what people can sell to the town as well as what the purchasing department does. Our guest today is Doug Sippel. He's director of the department and let's meet him and get started. Thank you Richard, I'm glad to be here. So I think to get started a little bit, let's tell people a little bit about your background. Okay. What brought um, you to the town? Relatively local person. I graduated from Shaker High School, went on, graduated from Oswego State and uh, began my career in banking locally. Uh, ended up in a purchasing department within, within uh, Fleet Bank and then came to the town about five years ago. I've uh, been with the purchasing department since uh, coming to the town. I'm currently the director of general services, which general services is a department within the town made up of purchasing and uh, building shared services. We're kind of a split. One side does the purchasing, the other side takes care of the facilities, building and grounds maintenance, uh, uh, custodial work, those type of things. So, uh, I mean, if let's just go back a little bit, back over this general department. Were the two departments put together at some point? Were they separate? S several like years ago, they were they were uh, merged into one department. Uh, a couple directors before me, and um, the f the there was a um, feeling that there that there was some advantage putting the two together. Uh, purchasing basically covers a lot of different departments. We deal with all the departments in the town, uh, all the supplies or equipment, anything that any department would need. And on the other side, building shared services, we provide um, you know, facilities, uh, maintain the facilities, again, dealing with all the departments in the town. So it made sense for them to be together. So on that second hat, which we're not really going into, you, there are quite a few employees that you would be supervising. We, the general services department, there are six employees, besides myself, there's six uh, employees, five full-time and one part-time in purchasing, and there's about 38 full-time and six part-time employees in uh, building shared services. So, so that's a pretty really good size department. That's really where a lot of the, the, the physical work gets yeah. done, right? Correct. As well as handling all the problems with buildings. Correct. Anything that would go on, grounds work, buildings work, we, we we're involved which with. Which kind of gets you into departments and you know a little more about yeah, their needs. Try to. We try to be, uh, you know, anticipating what people's needs may be if they're changing. Um, be prepared to handle any, any issues that may come up. Uh, and also trying to anticipate uh, from the purchasing side, you know, peaks and valleys in terms of uh, things that we may need to gear up for and be prepared for. Uh, the spring is a classic time where we're getting ready for the Parks and Recreation Department to gear up to get all the supplies that they need for the summer season. I see. So we, we it, some of it's seasonal and cyclical, uh, but we, we do try to be involved with all the departments. Now the main thrust of our show today is, is the purchasing side, and, and okay. the purpose of that was that, well, General services is really a town department. It's good that people know what they do, but most people can imagine that there's a building that needs to be maintained. Correct. On the other hand, the purchasing side really involves people in the town in a new, in another way, not a new way, but uh, the town buys quite a bit of things. We do. Um, the town is, you can kind of think of the town similar to a, a, a large business. Anything that you could think of that a business would, would buy from equipment, to office supplies, to materials that they need to operate, we buy. Add to that the infrastructure things that we deal with as a municipality. Uh, blacktop to do the roads, uh, rock salt to take care of the snow and ice in the winter, um, heavy equipment to, to move things at the landfill. Uh, anything that, we, that the town needs or uses uh, from an from a equipment or, or uh, supply standpoint we're involved with, we also are involved with any services that the town may hire. Um, um, tree, we have, uh, we have contracts with tree trimmers to do uh, work on some of the town right away trees. Um, we have contracts for uh, engineering services, all that, are, that we, we've looked at or been involved with in some way. I think for most people, if they're not in sales and they don't have a product, it, it's kind of interesting to get an idea about the breadth of what, what it town would need. Yep. The town has what, about 600 
employees altogether? I think I think there's 500 full time and a, a good number of part part time employees. Uh, we have probably over 13 facilities uh, that have employees in them from water treatment plants, sewer treatment plants. Um, we have the EMS department, the police department, those type of things that maybe a business wouldn't deal with. Uh, all that have unique supplies that, that are uh, important to them and needed for them to, to operate. Uh, and a lot of that have common supplies, office supplies, uh, paper, printing services. Uh, we're, we're, try we're involved with all of that. And then the specialty departments, uh, of course we know the library, we have microfilm machines Correct. and everybody has computers. Yep. Yep. So everybody, we, we try to be involved, we try to communicate with the departments. Um, we don't profess to be experts in each of the departments in terms of what they need. We try to be experts in the process to get the items. Uh, and we rely on the experts in the departments to help us with specifications, writing if we need something specific, or to identify what they need for their department to operate. So I think that gives people an idea, and one can use an imagination and think of many, many things, but yep. that would become more like the Psalms, or it would yep. just be a lot of litanies yep. of things. In, in general, what we look at is we, we are responsible to try to get the best product needed for the departments, or the best, the, the most essential service needed for the departments at the best price uh, when needed so you know we're, we, we you want it when when it's needed to be used uh, and follow all the rules and regulations both of the of the town and of the, uh, the state in doing that and, and it's really your department for each of these whether it's the library or the water department or the tax office or the police department correct you need to be the one that helps purchase that correct we need to be, wh whether it be a simple situation where we've established a contract and you're now purchasing your office supplies from Staples, for example, or you need a, spe a specialty item that we need to uh, research, find the item, write specifications, and get pricing for, we're involved with it in some way. W could be as simple as, as issuing the purchase order to make the purchase, or it could be as detailed as administering a uh, open competitive bid for your department to get And, and I, th I think we want to go into that a little bit, but before we do that, let's okay. also touch on some of the rules. Um, you know, people would say, well, I want to sell you a copy, or I want to sell you my paper, mm -hmm. and they want to know that it's fair. Okay. Uh, w what are the rules governing uh, purchasing uh, from people or selling to the town? All right. The town is a municipality. Uh, we're, we're a municipality. We're a political subdivision of, of the state of New York. So we're, we come under a general municipal law and which spells out how and, and uh, what processes we need to go by in order to make purchases. We differ from a corporation where a corporation can just establish their own guidelines and, and follow those, uh, what, whatever that may be. And having come from the purchasing side in the commercial side, that's probably the biggest difference is the, the corporation sets the guidelines and that's what you live with. Here at the town, there are certain levels that are administered and governed by general municipal law, which is state law, that tells us what we have to do if we're going to purchase products or services over certain dollar amounts. And then there's other laws that say the town needs to establish um, policies and procedures for how they're going to handle purchases up to those limits. I see. Uh, currently, the uh, legislation in the state of New York, any purchase that we make that's $10,000 or higher, or any public works project that we, that we deal with that's $20,000 or higher, um, we need to do as an open competitive bid. And, and anything under those levels, then there's a town policy that's been adopted by the town board and is reviewed each year by the town board to make sure that it's still current and still appropriate that tells us what, what, we, what activities we need to do. Do we need to get written quotes? Can we get verbal quotes? Um, it all relates to trying to uh, have competition so that we can get the best price that we're looking for for the item that we need when, when we need it. And then all this is in the public eye. So Correct. I, I, and a, a bid, as you mentioned before, there's an opening. Correct. A and there's advertising requirements and all there kinds of things. A bid is very structured. Uh, and it takes, it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of effort to usually to, p to pull a bid off. Um, I mentioned that I have, um, there's five full-time employees uh, in, the, in the purchasing side of, of general services, and I have one part-time employee. Those five individuals uh, administer probably 70 to 100 bids a year. We, we issued, last year we issued just over 7,000 purchase orders for a, a total of about $9 million. 
they're very busy. They're very dedicated employees. I'm very, I'm very lucky to have them in, in, uh, in the department. The bid is, a, is very structured. It starts with the identification of a need by a department that they need a piece of equipment or they need a, a, a particular project done. And I guess we should back up a second. We look at two levels. We look at purchases. I need to buy a truck. I need to buy a, uh, a, a piece of equipment. Um, we need to buy uh, printing supplies or we need to buy so office really supplies. Whatever broad the level, a broad correct, range. Whatever the broad range is. Um, it's either a single item of 10,000 or like items aggregated together over 10,000 that we would have to do the bid. And, and I think that's caught us off guard a few times. A couple thinking, times. Well, you're going to need uh, to buy this over and over. Correct. So. You know, you, and the other thing is that we have to watch out for. You may not know that, for example, carpet. You may not know that there's three other departments doing a carpet project. Uh -huh. You have a small, you know, $3,000 carpet project that you want to do. You don't understand why we have to put it out to bid, but if there's six of you that have a, a $3,000 carpet project, then it gets to the level that we need to look at it from a standpoint of a bid. So we try to keep, keep tabs on what all the departments are doing to lump that together. And, and so we have, we have state laws and we have local laws. Correct, town and laws. And then we have policies to govern. Mostly, the t mostly the what we have is state law and we have town rules and regulations. Okay. Um, so we have purchases, that's one side, $10,000 is the number there. Then we have public works projects, and that would be like uh, paving the roads. Anything to do with public property, uh, maintaining a building, building a building. They're, they're public works projects. Uh, historically, they've been more expensive projects, so they are, the, the, when the laws were set back in the 70s, $20,000 bought you a lot of public works, that's where you, you started your bids. Same thing with, th if you think back to the 70s, what a vehicle cost. Um, there, are, there are... I remember um, 5,000. Yeah, <laughs> they were a lot less, less than 10,000. Yeah. Uh, and the, the, those numbers have not adjusted. So as a side note, we, we participate, the Town of Colony is a member of um, SAMPO, which is the State Municipal Purchasing Officers Association. We're also um, members of the National Institute of Government Purchasing. There's been lobbying efforts and efforts to try to get some of those numbers increased to adjust it for inflation because it is expensive and time consuming to, to do a bid. But the bid starts with the department really identifying the need. They work with us or they work with an engineering firm or they may, may work with a number of vendors to try to gather some specifications as to what this piece of equipment, we'll use that as an example, what that is that they need. Uh, then, once they've identified that they, that they want it and that they need it for their operations and that they have funding for it to be able to buy it, then the town board needs to authorize uh, advertising for the, for the bid, which is basically a public notice out to the world, hey, the town is looking to buy this piece of equipment. Here, here's how you get the specifications. Here's how you submit a bid. Now, that may be the first time a public company sees Correct. that the town wants to buy something. Correct. Or perhaps it may not if... If, if, do departments ever go out and, and, and find information yep. on their own? Yep, we, um, we not, being, not being an expert in a particular piece of equipment, a lot of times you may find that there's a number of, of uh, companies that offer a similar type of equipment. So the, the departments generally will go out and do some research, um, look at various types. What features do they like on one? What features do they like on another? and they develop their specification generally around what they're looking for. So, so if I were owner of a company or a salesperson in, in the town and I felt that I had a product that maybe the town might need, I could actually go to a department or to you and, mm -hmm. and just let you know about yep. what we did. Yep, what, what, what you offer, what's available, um, and we keep, you know, we'll keep that in mind. Uh, if in fact we're looking for some information, we also keep that in mind and, and we encourage people and we'll talk about it and we've, we've tried to move into the 20th century with, uh, with our process. And now 21st. Exactly. <laughs> um, with uh, putting, them on, putting the information online and trying to make it available for people. But uh, yes, departments work with vendors uh, trying to find out what's out there, researching. Is there a better mousetrap out there to do what they're trying to do? Um, how, you know, what, what's current in the market that's available? Uh, so the town board authorizes it. Our, our, we have to put an advertisement, uh, a legal notice actually, in our local uh, town newspaper, which is for us the official newspaper is the county spotlight. Then there's a, certain, the, the, uh, there's a certain amount of time that we have to give vendors the opportunity to pick up the, the documents, look at the specifications, and come back to a bid. 
the, uh, the legal notice always indicates the date and time of the bid opening. And what happens at that point is um, we collect the bids up until the moment that that bid opening is to happen. So if now we could say- Could we go back just sure. a little bit? Let's say I see something in the paper. I still have time to get a bid yep. in. Oh yeah. Uh, do, do vendors generally know uh, exactly how to put this bid together, or, or sometimes they're simple and they just the, the send it in? The sp well, the specifications will always are, are pretty lengthy in terms of that they always will, there'll be the specifications for the item that we're looking for, and then there'll be what we call the other information, which talks about uh, where the bid needs to go. Um, we normally, on most of our bids, will put some type of response sheet, uh, because normally what bidding comes down to is the low price. Right. Um, so normally what we're looking for is what are you going to offer, can you meet the specifications, and uh, what your price would be. So we normally include a sheet. Um, there's, a, there's two sheets that actually have to come back. One is the price sheet that includes what their bid is. Okay. The other is what we call our non-collusion statement, that they basically are signing that they didn't work with anyone, any other vendor, any other person, uh, in kind of colluding with coming up with the price for the item that they're, that they're bidding on. Right. So two vendors didn't get together and, and kind of arbitrarily just, you know, make up some determination. And then they could the divide the market eventually. Correct. Maybe. So they have, to, they have to certify in every bid that there's no collusion involved. So yeah, the, the, the bid is very self-explanatory in terms of what they have to fill out and, and what and we need and to get back. And is the bid actually, it, the bid itself is not in the paper. It's no, just the legal notice and, and how then, to get it. And then they contact your office. They, they either contact our office or if they've registered online, they can go online and get a, uh, a bid. And, and we're going to talk, we'll about, talk that about that system. Yes. Right. But anyway, getting back to the process, uh, the, we, let's just assume that we have a bid opening today at 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock comes, the last bid is received. 201 comes, the, bids are, the, the time frame is closed. We do not accept any more bids after that time frame. We then will have a public opening. If there's any vendors who've, who, who have decided they wanted to stick around, uh, if a department representative wants to come and see what the results are of the bid, if any members of the public want to come in, um, we've had a, a variety of uh, levels of response of people who've come into the bid openings. Well, I would assume if it was a large bid, that would mean something to people. Our, our biggest, our biggest uh, bids are normally construction bids. Uh -huh. And normally because they're usually broken down into several pieces. General contracting, uh, plumbing, heating, electrical. Um, so there usually will be a number of contractors for each one of those contracts. And a lot of them will come and stay for the bid opening just to hear the results. Right. But we open, we publicly open the bid. There's been no, we are, the, the bids all have to come in in a sealed envelope. Uh, we, we log them in, we log that we have them, we hold on to them until the date and time of the opening, we open the bids publicly, we read, the, we read all the pricing allowed. So now that doesn't mean they've won though, I assume. No, no. At that point, all it does is it, it indicates who's, who's submitted a bid and what their, what their offering price is. Uh, then someone on my staff will go through and verify the bids, make sure the documents are there. If it's a lengthy bid of a lot of items, redo the math to make sure the math is correct. And then we normally forward the copies to the department to look at and to review. Because the law is very specific that the town, uh, I with a bid, we, are, we need to award that to what is deemed the lowest responsible bidder. And that, and that doesn't always necessarily mean that it's the lowest bidder. Um, the lowest responsible bidder would be the person who can supply the items that they have agreed to, uh, have met all the specifications within the bid, uh, we've not had issues or problems with in the past that may affect their ability to, to pr uh, perform the service or to provide the items. So the departments will look at that and we'll look at that as well with them to determine if there's any issues with responsibility. Now if it's a brand new company, uh, they start with a clean slate? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep, they do. We, you know, normally, um, you know, someone will talk to them, we will talk to them, or the department who's dealing with it will talk to them. We check references. We call previous jobs um, that are there. We're, we're working on a job right now at the uh -huh. Prine House, and we're, we're checking the references at this point. We just opened that bid because it it's a company that we haven't done business with in the past. And now if you've got really bad references? Uh, it, it, that, w that is one of the items that can affect their, their being what's considered a responsible bidder. Okay. Um, and if, it's not if they're not responsible, if the item does not meet the specifications that we're looking for, um, if they're, you know, if they if they try to to substitute a um, uh, an inferior product for what we're looking for, 
then, then sometimes we'll go on to the next lowest bidder. Now, uh, before we jump off bids, I know we're going to go through some automation systems, yep. but before we get off bids, is there any advice you can give people? It, it strikes me, for example, that trying to cheat is maybe not a good idea. No. Um, really, the best advice is to read the specifications. Make sure that if you're going to, if you want to put in a bid, that your item actually meets the specifications. Almost all of our bids have a clause in them that it's or equal. So if we say that we're looking for a, uh, just use an example, a Ford uh, F-150 four-wheel drive pickup truck, for example, if that's what we're looking for, and that's, we may use that as a, as a reference point so that everybody understands exactly what we're looking for. We're looking for something um, that is easily identifiable. Everybody understands what a Ford F-150 is, for example. Right. We always indicate or equal. So if, you're a, if you provide a product that is uh, a competitor to Ford and it has similar features, has similar uh, uh, specifications, by all means, we will certainly consider that. Nothing, we're not saying that that's what we're, that we, we are only going to buy an F Ford, uh, Ford F-150. Right. But that's what we're using as to kind of set our standard. This right. is what we're looking for. So then the responsibility is on the vendor to prove to us that it's equal. So if, you know, if the, if the, uh, if the Ford has an eight cylinder and you're trying to submit to us a six cylinder and we're, we need an eight cylinder, that we would not deem as or equal. So we right. wouldn't really consider that. But if the vendor can show us that it's or equal, we have no problems uh, looking at the lowest responsible bidder that met the specifications. Okay, so now you've analyzed the so bids. So we've analyzed the bids, then it goes back to the town board. And the town board actually makes the award as to who the winner is of the bid. And then once that happens, we send letters out to all the vendors that have submitted uh, bids, you know, advising them of what the award is, uh, answering any questions that may come in. If we, we get a lot of them ahead of time as to, you know, why, am, why are you recommending my pro not recommending my product or, you know, why didn't I win? We've talked to vendors about. Um, you know what what the problem was with the bid or, or this the so you're perfectly happy being open yep. and saying this yep. is why no problem and then once the town board authorizes it usually at that point there's a purchase order done and we we can uh, you know we order the item and go on from there now we do have there are a couple exceptions um, getting back to the to general municipal law um, there are a few things that we are able to take advantage of uh, that would keep us from having to bid um, one of the biggest that we use a lot is New York State contract. And that is an item where New York State, uh, through the Office of General Services for New York State, will bid on specific items. Uh, for example, gasoline, diesel fuel, uh, rock salt for the, for the winter, a lot of vehicles. Um, they bid on it based on what municipalities across the state need and what the state's needs are in general. Okay. The idea being that uh, if they put a bid together and it's the state of New York versus the town of Colony, they, they are probably going to be buying more and may get a better price. So we have the ability to buy off of uh, any New York State contract that's out there. So How big of a company do you have to be to get on that list? Basically, it's, it's a very similar process to what we would go through. It's just on a grander scale. So it, it, any so company can get on there. So uh, there are companies... Um, there are car dealers, individual car dealers that are supplying a particular manufacturer for the entire, for the entire state wow. on there because of their price and, and, and them participating in that bid. So there's some good opportunities yes. there. Yes, and it, it, it gives us the opportunity to look at that and determine, you know, can we actually do better than the state contract? Sometimes we've found that we can. Uh, sometimes because maybe there's a, a local dealer who didn't participate in the state contract and if we put it out to bid ourselves, and they do participate, you know, they would do something. So in a way, you better. might think of the state contract price as a bid. And then yes. you, we you're can't, bidding we can't, again. Uh, we can't, um, we, we wouldn't bid a, an item knowing that there's a, that there's a, a decent state contract price out okay. there. Because be you wouldn't go time. through the trouble, right? Right, wouldn't be worth our time, number one. And we really, we really don't bid something and then compare it to the state contract. Right. We make that determination first. Uh, if the state contract's a better deal, um, or if, we, if we've talked to vendors or we've set, you know, gotten some preliminary pricing and that's a better deal, um, then we'll, we'll go that route. So but that's an exception. We could, we've, we've purchased a lot of material um, that was well over the $10,000 or uh, level through the state contract, and it's, it's, it's worked out very well because of economies. The, 
they're dealing with New York State versus just the town. And that seems like it saved a lot of money yep. just in not having to yep. go through the, the not process. Not having to go through the process. You, you figure the town board meets generally twice a month. So we need, and there needs to be time in between a meeting to put the bid in the paper, uh, um, allow vendors time to, to go through it, work out their pricing, allow the department's time to review the bids that come back. Doing a bid can take, you know, we can do it quicker, but it can take up to two months from authorization to, um, to advertise to actually, actually an award. So, so that's also a time a you time. can't use the equipment. Yep. Well, Correct. Right. There are a couple other exceptions that the town has, has taken advantage of. One is straight leasing. Um, if we're doing a straight lease, we lease most of our copiers, for example. Um, we have a provision in our, in our own policy that we get quotes on that, and we look at other vendors to determine uh, what's the best deal for the town. But a straight lease is something that's an exception because we're not actually buying an item. We're just basically leasing it. Using, using it. it. So we don't have to bid those items. Uh, the other biggest exception is an emergency. Um, as you can imagine, things happen uh, when you're dealing with a town the size of Colony that, you know, um, a, road, a road will have a, a problem, there a, a sinkhole, a water main break, all those types of things that could happen to the infrastructure um, there, there's uh, specific guidelines for what it is an emergency, and to get some of those fixed, we couldn't wait two months. Uh, I don't to, think to anybody go would the bidding put up process. With that. No. Uh, so we're able to do some of those in, in an emergency basis as well. Now, there, you mentioned going into the 21st century. Yes. We'll move up. Yes. Uh, what? Tell us more about that. It's a, an online system yes. of some sort. We, we, um, there, there's been a number of companies that have um, come together and are offering an online, basically it's a, it's a bid warehouse. Um, we participate currently with a company called BidNet. Uh, we've been participating with them for about five years now. Um, they, they are basically a group, uh, they're, they're a bid company, a national bid company, but they establish groups of municipalities in local communities. Uh -huh. So where there are others out there that are national, uh, in this case we participate in the capital region purchasing group. And it's through BidNet, and um, I think we're going to go through that in just a couple minutes. But just to give you a little background, what that does for us is uh, gets our bids online and hopefully in, the, uh, in front of people who have an interest in doing business with not only the town of Colony, but a lot of other municipalities in the area. Because municipal municipalities join, um, you post all your bids, and we post a lot of our quotes on the on the internet so all of our bids go yep. on yep. there okay uh, they all go on there uh, may just be the legal notice if it's a uh, pretty large bid that we don't have the ability to to download to the to there or if you need to pick up a book uh -huh. um, or it may be uh, the whole bid if it's if it's one that we can that fits on the on the page on the size of the of the, the site uh, but either way you can get information either the actual bid or how to get the information um, and Let's what it does when you join you, a letter goes to all of the vendors that are in your database. We, the town maintains a database of vendors based on people we've done business with in the past. They all got a letter. They were all encouraged to register with BidNet. does two things for them. Number one, it gives them the opportunity to find our bids easier than having to go through the paper once a week. And number two, because it's a, it's a local group, um, they, they not only have access to any bids that the town of Colony has on there, but they have bids to any other participating uh, agency. So they would go to the website frequently, yep. or how would that work? Well, there, BidNet has a couple different levels of membership. You can, you can just be a non-paying member, and you basically are responsible to go to the website and see what opportunities are out there. And they, you basically, when you register, there's a way that you tell BidNet what types of products and services you can offer. Um, and then... The, um, you, can, you can plug in, let's say you offer tires. Uh, you can plug in tires, and any time when you go and look, any bids that are out there that relate to tires, you would see the Town of Colonies, uh, Albany County, any other uh, municipality that's on the system, you'd see any bids that they have related to tires. Right. Uh, there are also other levels if you wanted to join and pay a, a subscription fee with them. You, then what happens with that is any bid that comes on that is related to your field, they automatically send you an email. Nice. So yeah. uh, your, or a fax or something along those lines. But it's very easy not only for us, uh, and what, what the beauty is is that where we had a, a finite list of vendors that we, we did business with, that we've done business with in the past, 
Um, that was expanded now because when all the other municipalities joined, all their vendors went into the database. So, so everybody gets put, a bigger right, pool. So when we put our stuff on, more eyes are actually looking at it, and hopefully the, uh, the, the we would get more bids and there'd be more competition, which hopefully would keep the price down. And more interest because yes. there's more product up there to yep. bid for. Yep, definitely. So The other uh, nice thing about it, just to, sure. to, to interrupt, is um, because, it's a, uh, because they are part of a national company, BidNet, um, as members, we have the ability to go on and look at previous uh, municipalities' bids. So if um, somebody has a bid on there for a unique piece of equipment, and all of a sudden we find ourselves in need for, uh, for that unique piece of equipment. I know our landfill has some things that yep. sound very unique. Yes, very, <laughs> very challenging. Um, instead of having to reinvent the wheel, we can go on and see what specifications they used or what, how, you know, how they crafted the bid. Um, and we can do that on a local level for the participating agencies, and we can do that on a national level through other bids that they've gotten through other states. And what we mainly look for it for is to look at, you know, ideas on specifications. Have we thought of everything that we need to think of for uh, warranties, for features, for, uh, you know, what we'd like the vendor to provide? Great. So it's, it's been very helpful in terms of uh, uh, sharing of information um, through SAMPO, which is the state uh, municipal purchasing officers organization. We share uh, bid information and specifications back and forth as well. Um, and same thing with the National Institute of Government Purchasing. Now, you have to have a you have to join. So yep. let, let's take people through the the process okay. as as well as we can. Okay. Um, basically, anyone who would want to who would want to start to do business with the town has has really two avenues. One, they can call the purchasing department and they can talk to to anyone in purchasing, and kind of explain what they're what they're looking for. Um, if, they, if they have a particular um, item that they're looking for, we may refer them to the department to kind of talk to the department because, again, they're, they're really the experts with what they need in their area. Um, the other thing, they can go on to the, the colony, www.colony.org website and click on General Services, and that will bring up the General Services page, which talks a little bit about purchasing and uh, building shared services. But and if they and we'll show people these yep, web pages yep. as we go if along. If they go into the purchasing section, there is a link on our website which will take them directly to um, the uh, bid net, which is uh, www.govbids.com. And that's in our frequently asked questions, how do I offer products and services to the town of Colony? Once they get to the bid net page, um, that's where they have the opportunity to uh, look around in bid net, there's a list of participating agencies. Um, you know, we have agencies from Albany County, the airport, um, Capital Region BOCES, City of Schenectady, uh, City School District in Albany. There's a, a good number of, uh, of uh, other municipalities in the area that are on that. But um, they also, at that point, would have the opportunity to register. And the registration process is it's taking them through right there, where we'll show them um, get information, contact information, uh, do they want to join for free, do they want to be notified if there's a, if there's a bid available. Um, once they're in and they're registered, then if they wanted to see, for example, any, any bid that's currently outstanding for the Town of Colony, they would click on the Town of Colony and up would come a list of open bids and addendums for the Town of Colony. Now when we printed this particular one that you're going to show, we only had one out there which was buying approximately 2,000 tons of highway uh, millings and recycled asphalt. Although by weight, you've got to say that's yep. a lot of that, materials. That's a lot of <laughs> materials, which we, uh, that was for the uh, um, environmental services group, which is the landfill, and we opened that bid on the, the uh, July 12th. So they would then have the ability to look at that bid, determine if that's something that they're interested in bidding on. Um, they can't submit a bid online. They would have to get the information. They would have to get the documentation, either downloading it from, they can get the, sometimes the documents from BidNet, but right now, um, the, the law has been changed that will allow at some point electronic bids to come in, but um, the really the procedures have not been established at the state level to allow that. Okay. So um, they have to still submit the bid in a sealed envelope to the purchasing department by the date that, the, uh, that is in the notice. Okay. So, so it's, I would encourage most people to get on and at least register, uh, be, av be aware. Um, once, the, uh, once they found it, let's say they were interested in that particular bid, then it will open up an area that will give them a little bit more details. In this case, it, it would tell them when the bid was opening. It would tell them the time and date, uh, basic information as to what they were looking for. 
Uh, and in this one, in, as a matter of fact, the, docu the entire bid document was online, that they would click on a link at the top, and the Word document would open up for them. They could print it out and submit their bid. Fantastic. Yep, it's very simple, very simple. There are quotes that we put on here, uh, and a quote for us is a less formal method of, of, of a bid, so to speak. That's where it gets into the area where we're under the 10,000 or 20,000 and we're now following town policy. Uh, and those they can submit online. Because those can be either submitted online, faxed, or brought to the office. Now is that done routinely? Yeah, we, re we, do, we do quotes on a regular basis because things will come up during the year. We, we, we work on, a, on an annual basis, January to December. And a lot of our contracts or a lot of our bids run January to December. So in the fall, we'll renew certain bids if there was renewal clauses in the actual bid. Um, we'll change things if uh, you know, we need to make adjustments and rebid them. And, and then if things, if things come up during the year, something new, there's an item that wasn't anticipated at the beginning of the year when, when we're you know, trying to get most of the things done for the year, uh, then we'd, we'll quote it. We do bids throughout the year as, as they come up. Now, if somebody has a question about the whole process? Whole process, they can, they can call me anytime. Uh, my office is at Town Hall. We're open 8.30 to 4.30 Monday through Friday. Uh, the, all the contact information is on the website, and we'd be more than happy and to And we'll put it up on the them. screen, too? Yep. yep. Well, this is pretty interesting. I, I hope that uh, people in the audience see, uh, at least some of the audience would need this, yep. that, that they see uh, what they can do through this website and, and by calling the town. Uh, we purchased things that I didn't think about as being relevant to a bid or a quote process, such as printing. Mm -hmm. And it's really nice from the library's point of view we don't have to worry about getting the best printing price. We okay. just call your office. Yep. We've already done that. We've already put that together. So people who run printing shops need to know yep. that if they want to do business with the yep. town, that's the way to do yep. it. For the, for the larger things that we buy, yes, they have to go through the bidding process. Um, and you know, we're, we, we, we're more than happy to sit down and explain them, to them the process, go through any questions that they have. There's al there always is a, a section in the bid um, whether it be our department or the actual de um, town department that's looking for the item, if, they, if they'd like to look at something, if they'd like to come in and talk to somebody about it, there's always a contact information there to try to make sure that, we're, that they understand what we're looking for because uh, we certainly don't want to waste our time going through uh, a bid that doesn't meet our specifications um, and, and that we're getting the items that we're looking for. It's very frustrating at times when you get, we've had bids where we've gotten no bids and we've had to go. We've gone back to some of the vendors and said, you know, what was the problem? Why didn't you bid on that? Um, well, you had certain clauses in there that made it a problem for us, and we've made adjustments and put them back out to bid. Or we get one bid, um, and you know, sometimes it's a, it's a, it's uh, the nature that there's limited number of people who sell the item, um, and we're trying to get competition. We're trying to keep the prices low, but you know, you you have to try to find the competition at some point. So we, we really encourage anybody who has an interest in doing business with the town, um, call our office, make, your, make yourself known to us, call any of the departments that you have a specialty for, um, and let them know, because they're very involved with doing the specifications, and, look at, and sign up for BidNet so you're aware of what's out there. Fantastic. Yep. I want to thank you for being on the show. Thanks for having me. I hope uh, people benefit from that, and we'll have you back uh, eventually. Okay. Sounds good. I don't want to thank everybody for watching. Hope you enjoyed the show and invite you to the next show. Have a great week. Take care. Welcome to Channel 17, the Town of Colony Government Channel.